day welcome this is your daily med with lady v grace and peace from god our father and from our lord and savior jesus christ as we have been talking about hindrances to our prayer this morning we want to look up at what a sin in general does we know that uh, when we disobey we sin when we transgress God's law we sin when we have iniquity in our lives we sin we miss the mark Romans 3 23 tells us when we do ungodliness Romans 4 and verse 5 tells us that this is sin. It hinders us. Unbelief. We see that in Mark 9 and verse 24. We also know that sin is universal. It's everywhere. Romans 3 and 3. And in fact, just all unrighteousness is sin. We also know that this sin originated with Satan. In Isaiah 14, 12 through 14. So, we know that when these and many more things that constitute sin is in our lives, our prayers become endured. And so we can't get the answer that we need from God when we pray. God does not answer those who cherish sin in their hearts. Psalm 66 and verse 18. To cherish sin in our hearts means there is a sin that we have and we love it so much that we are not willing to give it up. So what we will do, according to Proverbs 28 and 13, is to hide it or to conceal it there. But that becomes an hindrance to answers prayer. Our sins prevent our prayers from being answered. But if we confess them the Lord will show us mercy when we humbly repent when we renounce them when we turn away from them when we confess them we are agreeing with God that your standard is the right standard and that uh, whether we have disobeyed or whether we have lied, whether we have stealed or whatsoever else we might have done and is concealing it. We are saying, God, we are wrong in what we have done and you are right. And I come to confess, I come to make amends. Failure to confess our sins and make things right with God and man is a major cause for unanswered prayer. The writer says, if I have seen in my heart and encourage it, if I have pretended to be what I am not, and if I have loved iniquity while I profess to pray and be sorry for my sins the Lord would not hear me as we see in Psalm 66 18 I would be left without his help I'd be left without his support in my time of trouble but you know, according to Proverbs 28 and verse 13, it ought not 
it doesn't have to be so proverbs 28 and 13 as i read it says whoso conceals their sins does not uh, prosper so we won't prosper in prayer and we won't prosper in any other way when it comes to god but the one who confesses and renounces these sins finds mercy the scripture tells us if we come confessing our sins he is faithful and he is just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness so let's see what Isaiah 1 uh, tells us Isaiah 1 and verse 15 through verse 18 he says when you spread out your hands in prayer I hide my eyes from you even when you offer many prayers I hide my eyes from you even when you offer many prayers sorry for reading twice i am not listening he says your hands are full of blood wash and make yourselves clean take your evil deeds out of my sight stop doing wrong learn to do right seek justice defend the oppressed take up the cause of the fatherless plead the cause of the widow he says come now let us settle the matter says the lord though your sins are like scarlet they shall be as white as snow though they be red as crimson they shall be made white like wool so here the scripture is saying we might have done wrong in god's sight we might have sinned against him but if we go to him and settle the matter by confessing our sins then he will forgive us isaiah chapter 59 verse 1 and 2 isaiah 59 verse 1 and 2 what does it tells us isaiah 59 verse 1 and 2 he says to us surely the harm of the Lord is not too short to save nor is his ear too dull to hear but your iniquities have separated you from your God your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear so we see how dangerous it has become when we cherish sin when we hide them or conceal them in our hearts it separates between our god and ourselves so he says listen even when we have our arms all stretched out he despise rituals that are without reality sacrifices that are without obedience the scripture tells us about that gifts without the givers 
hearts that are far from him even while we see we are drawing near with our words we draw near to him with our hearts being far because a sin is concealed in the heart so as long as we are living in sin it doesn't matter that our attendance in church services or the activities that we do these things more become an insult to God he says to his people that they were insulting him by trampling of his courts because they are coming but not with the right intention not with the right motive not wanting to give up the sin that is concealed in their lives mixing uh, the mixing of iniquity in his solemn solemn assemble is hateful to him he will not pay no attention to our outstretched hands or our many prayers that we come and offer if we are not getting rid of the hindrances so he says wash you make you clean put away the evil of your doings and we can only do this true repentance and forsaking of the evil and then practice to do that which is right in the sight of God so today we don't want our prayers to be hindered but we want to be able to pray and when we pray we know that we have an answer to our prayers because we have been obedient we are walking in love we are removing the hindrances from our lives by confessing our sins god bless you today thank you again for watching please like please subscribe please share also leave your comments and don't forget to visit my YouTube channel, Daily Med with Lay.